All right, everybody, welcome. Thank you so much for being here today and the uh, Treasury Talent Community. I am uh, Donnie Gupton. I am the uh, marketing guy for uh, the Treasury Talent team here. I'm the guy behind the scenes who you don't see, but uh, we're excited to be here today. Welcome you guys to the community. We're really excited about all the people that have joined in uh, so far in the community. And we wanted to just kind of let you guys uh, get to know us today. And we're going to share a pretty interesting topic around Treasury titles. But before we get into that, um, I want to introduce our team and welcome first and foremost, our founder, Simon. Simon, what's going on, man? Hey, Donnie. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited. I've never gone live on Facebook before, so I'm super pumped. Yeah. Um, yeah, look, I'm, I'm just excited to have uh, everyone on today. You know, you're, you're, you're pushing our boundaries and getting us on live on Facebook and doing all this great stuff behind the scenes for us. So thank you for that. And hopefully we can share amongst the community today so that everyone gets a better understanding on the, the Treasury titles topic. Awesome. Thanks, Simon. Joe, welcome, buddy. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, definitely echo. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, definitely want to echo Simon's sentiments. You're pushing our comfort zones on this one. Happy to be a part of it. Happy to be out and interacting with the community, um, taking the conversations that we have on a daily basis, taking them on a, on a, just a, a public basis. I mean, it's, it's a fantastic opportunity and we look forward to the, the upcoming conversation. Awesome. And finally, last but definitely not least, Scotty. What's up, buddy? Well, hey, guys. Um, Donnie, thanks for uh, the introduction. Um, just by way of high-level overview, for me, I focus on business development and recruitment on the western half of the United States. And I, I also echo these guys' sentiments. Um, excited, um, frankly, slightly nervous. Don't screw it up. But also, um, you know, really excited about uh, about the topic today that we're going to discuss. Yeah, excellent, man. You can't be nervous if you're on a, a, a on a show with a guy with a beard like this. So um, yeah, that's why we keep you behind the scenes. Yeah, exactly. That's why exactly why I'm the behind the scenes guy. So hey, for those of you that are watching right now, um, feel free to show a little love and a little like. That'll get us uh, some more views on this. But more importantly, if you have any questions, we definitely want to interact with you. And that's one of the things that we envision with this community. Um, is really be able to share what we're seeing kind of in the market um, and share some of those stories with you um, to add value to you and your career. And so today what we were going to do is just share a topic um, that just, you know, basically something that Simon just recently posted around um, job titles in, in treasury and how important they are. So Simon, you know, based off of that, I mean, what are your thoughts? I mean, how important should a job title be in as, as you know, in the treasury space? Thanks, Donnie. Yeah, look, we, I get asked this all the time. Um, it, it's a question that a lot of people, uh, well, the reason this came about was I had a treasury manager who uh, was emailing me and saying, look, I really want to be a treasury director. Can you get me a treasury director job? And, and I, I sent him a note. Well, we, we got into a conversation and I sort of said to him, look, I, I personally think that the treasury title is the wrong question that you're asking because, you know, in terms of career development, what, there's probably eight or nine other things that you should be thinking about before you're thinking about the treasury title. And developing your career is a personal thing. It's not something that I can tell you how to develop your career. But if you're a treasury manager, as he was um, in a, a smaller business, he had a fairly broad role. Um, and he was saying, I, I want the treasury director title. And I said to him, look, th there'd be better things for you to focus on, like <clears throat> getting into a bigger global business and getting exposure to, to FX. Um, it'd be better for you to go and get into a business where you can get some debt capital markets and funding experience. And these type of things that were more important, I think, to him in his career development than the title. Um, I, I could get him a title. Um, you know, if, if, we, if he really pushed it, yeah, we could get you a, a treasury director title, but is it actually going to be a better job for, for him than you know, what he was doing before? And the best example I'll give of that is I've placed, if we, let's just pick a number and I'll say 170. I've placed a treasurer at 170. I've placed a treasury director at 170. I've placed a senior treasury manager. I've placed a treasury manager. And I've even placed a senior treasury analyst at 170. So how much importance were there in those titles when they're all paying the same amount? So that to me just demonstrates that the titles can be misleading um, and the, you know, the titles are, it shouldn't be the be all and end all. It should be all about these other things that we're just talking about. 
Got it. So, you know, I mean, ultimately when it comes to, to the title, what you're saying is there's more to it than just the title and we shouldn't obsess over that necessarily necessarily. Yeah. hundred percent. I, I think that the title will be important at times, um, but you should be getting to the end of a profile, you know, the end of a search um, or the end of a process rather. Um, and then look, it doesn't matter what the title is. You, you know, you're working with people that you can learn from. You're working with people that you're going to enjoy working with. who are going to make your, you know, your day enjoyable day to day. Um, and then you're getting career development. The career development piece is by far the most important thing and checking off that you're, you know, you're developing yourself. And then the title is, you know, second, third, I, I would say 10th on that list of, uh, of importance. Awesome. Yeah. That makes, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Joe, would you have, do you have any examples, you know I mean? Because obviously in some cases, you know, titles, do matter. I mean, they have to matter to yeah. some degree. I mean, do you have any examples you can share with us where a title, you know, makes more sense and matters? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to, to Simon's point, I'm a firm believer of the titles really shouldn't matter. Um, it can make the job search, especially if you're just looking through job postings and that type of stuff, it can be extremely misleading because you're essentially at the mercy of an HRIS system. Um, but you know, a, a recent example, I was talking with a client, uh, they had asked me for guidance based on the responsibilities on what it should be titled at. Um, we landed on a certain title that happened to be a manager. And then um, basically we had a person going through the process. The more that we had learned about the responsibilities, about the role, about the, how they were building out their team, turns out this person was just gonna be interacting with directors all over the place. And if you're in the wrong corporate environment, you can have, I think we've all been kind of victim of this before, you can have rank pulled on you pretty quickly. So if your manager is sitting at a title or at a table of directors, and you go to counter someone, or if you're trying to bring up a valid point, someone could easily just say, well, yeah, that's why you're a manager, I'm a director, and it could be minimized pretty easily. So you wanna just be aware, and that's why the interview, the conversations in the interview process become that much more important, simply for the fact that that's where you're actually learning about the role, the scope, the responsibilities, and that's where you start to form that in your head. I can be called the world's most expensive janitor and still oversee U.S. recruiting operations for Simon. Now, he doesn't call me a janitor, at least not to my face, but, <laughs> you know. It's we should a, hear what he says behind your back. We yeah, I know, I know. He's not just out here shuffling crap. No, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you can't get lost in it. You have to focus on the role and the responsibilities. And um, the, where you, you just want to almost have your guard up as you're going through the interview process, you're learning about what the actual corporate landscape looks like in the role that you are pursuing or that you're speaking with the client about. Um, the other thing that you want to consider is the comp piece, you know, or the compensation. So when you look at it from an HR perspective, you're going to have different short-term and long-term incentive, uh, basically incentives at a manager level than you would at the director level, for instance. Um, in most cases, you're not going to get long-term incentive until you're hitting that director level. So that's where you just want to make sure that you're asking questions along the way and that you're constantly learning. And that's where the interview becomes a two-way conversation where you start to make that determination in your head. And then you're almost building a business case for yourself. If you can't make that business case once you have an offer in hand, then get in there. If it's, if it's a company, if all the other factors line up that Simon was talking about, then you get in there and you prove yourself. And you're almost creating a career path for yourself that way. Got it. So, you know, it sounds like really you know, the importance here is making sure that we don't miss out on an opportunity because we're stuck on some things um, that that may not be relevant. You know, necessarily from a maybe a poorly written job description or 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 anything. But yeah, you know, Scotty, what is your experience when it comes to like? an example of where maybe somebody's like fixated on the title that then they missed out on an opportunity because of that. And before we get into that, Tanya, thank you so much for the comment. Um, and thank you for, you know, um, your feedback on the group here. Let us know if you have any questions. We really appreciate you being here with us today. For those of you that are just joining on, we're talking about um, the importance of, of treasury um, job descriptions and job titles right now. And if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. Um, so that we can give you feedback. But getting back to you, Scotty, I mean, do you have any examples right now of, you know, a situation where somebody became too fixated on that job title? Sure, yeah. And I mean, I, I frankly have countless examples of this, but there is one that recently came to mind. And I think before I even get into the specific example, just to kind of touch on what both Simon and Joe have mentioned, context matters. Like 
a ton. And at the end of the day, titles are highly subjective depending on not just the team, but also the hiring manager. So to get to my example, recently um, we, we had a candidate who is currently in a manager title. And for, for this individual, it's very important um, for whatever reason, like that director title is what they are looking for. So they've actually, in one case, passed up a, uh, you know, it wasn't necessarily an offer, but it was, it was definitely far along in the process, an opportunity where we were encouraging them, you know, definitely you want to pursue this conversation and, and just see where things go. Um, they passed it up because it wasn't going to be a director title. And they're just, you know, at the end of the day, the hiring manager said, there's no way that can happen. Um, and then another opportunity came up where, again, this was, this was a senior manager title, but what was most important to this person based on what they'd shared with us, with me was, you know, title didn't come up in that. There were a lot of other things and all of those things aligned in this particular case. So it's not even the top three most important things, but they're like, well, you think they'll make it a director role. Um, at the end of the day, I was, you know, kind of able to convince them to go through the process of interviewing for this job. And what was interesting about it is they see themselves as a potential director. The hiring manager said, I don't know if they have the executive presence to be a senior manager. So again, it goes back to like, what's most important to you in a job. And if you can get those things at a manager title, I think that goes back to what Simon's saying is like, who cares what the title is? If the job is going to progress you forward in your career and touch on what's most important to you in your career. Most, you know, that's again, at the end of the day, that's what matters more than anything else. Yeah. The irony I think of that Scotty is, you know, from a, the example you used from a career development standpoint, we all agreed that this candidate is a senior manager, you know, like in the truest form with their executive presence, with their, you know, they're, they're more of a technical person than a leader and they're not playing to their strengths by going into more of a technical role, which by default is going to be a senior manager title. Um, and all the work that they enjoy doing relates back to a manager title, doesn't it? Like it, it's one of those funny things that, you know, if, if you're not playing to your strengths, I get that the title's important to that person, but from a career development point of view, they're not even playing to their own strengths. And you're never going to get a director title when you're competing against others who have better presence than you. And you know, not taking that advice on is, is pretty important as well. Yeah, I think that's huge. I mean, for, for the fo folks that are watching out there, I mean, what would be our advice to them in terms of what should they look out for, you know, to help? Because obviously titles give us some indication and indicator, especially when we're searching online. I mean, what should, what's the best practices? I look, I think, Use, use the title to, to get the first step in the door of like, yes, there's an opportunity out there. Um, but once that happens, worry about everything else. You know, comp, like comp is the best one to really know where a role sits because you don't pay someone a lot of money to do a job that isn't important. So to get a, like to get a 30 grand bump on a salary, clearly that's going to be a more senior role than what a, a treasurer manager, treasury manager role is that you're doing currently. Um, so for me, the comp is going to really indicate where the role is rather than the title. But at the same time, to go to Scotty's example, like you don't really have a decision to make until you've got an offer. So to turn down going along and interviewing and learning more about the company, learning more about the people, you know, to me, that's just craziness because you might go along and meet your dream boss, you know, someone that you really connect with and you really want to work for and you work out in that process that, actually, this is a business I want to do. And you know what? I would have turned this down based on the job title, but I'm really glad I went along because now I've got a job that I really want to do and I'm willing to overlook the title now because everything else aligns. Makes sense. Uh, Joe, Scott, do you have anything to follow on on that? Yeah, it's really, the, again, Simon touched on it. It's, it's be open to the conversation have a complete understanding. You're only much like your resume is probably going to tell 50 to 75% of your story. These descriptions and these titles are only going to tell 50 to 75% of those stories as well. So go into these conversations with open eyes. I mean, just be open to the conversation, learn as much as you can ask questions. And, you know, I always have, uh, I have quite a few people who come back to me and say, well, what questions should I be asking during an interview? My advice to them is 
you're only helping yourself by interviewing the interviewer back and you're showing that you're engaged in the position. So learn as much as you can to make the best decision for you. And in order to decide what that best decision is, even before you start your job search, figure out where your priorities are. I mean, figure out what's important to you, what needs to be met. I always ask people in my conversations what their top three decision-making criteria are. And I'll be honest, title rarely scratches the surface on most of these, especially as you get further along in your career too. Yeah, I would, I would echo exactly what Joe said about, you know, in terms of what people should be doing, absolutely start to identify and really think through what's most important to you in, in the next job you take. That's going to evolve over the course of your career. But, you know, oftentimes when I ask that same exact question, and oftentimes I can tell that I'm catching someone unawares. They've never really thought about it. So taking the time up front to really identify what's most important to you. The other thing I'll mention uh, to Simon's point is it gets back to, this is an ironic piece, but if you're willing to go through the whole process, if you're willing to meet with the hiring manager and the hiring manager ultimately decides, Hey, I love this person. And they actually are a director. You know, we've seen it in our careers plenty of times where that can change the title. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's almost like, it's a bargaining chip, right? Um, among many other things like Simon mentioned, but if the hiring manager believes in it and, it, and they're like, man, this person justifies a title of, of director, whatever it is, that can change. So if you didn't go through the process, if you didn't go and meet with the hiring manager and ultimately sell yourself, um, you're just going to miss the opportunity, miss hundred percent of the shots that you don't take. All right. You know, given, and for those of you that are watching, you know, if you have any questions about um, job titles, drop them in the comments below right now. But, you know, given that we are in the space of, of you know, recruiting, how, do, how can we help? You know, how do we typically help if somebody's engaged with, with our team in this process when it comes to the job titles? Simon, do you have any feedback on that? Yeah, look, I just think keep an open mind, you know, like don't, don't use it as your number one um, criteria. Hear, hear what the opportunity is about. Go along and meet people. Um, I, you know, I, on the Treasury Talent podcast, I have this all the time. You listen to all of, like, there's some amazing treasurers who I've interviewed there. And the, the two things that they say all the time are the people that you work with are the most important because, you know, your boss is going to define your career and you want to work with people who make your day enjoyable. Secondly, get broad experience. So if you work in tech, for instance, that's fundamentally different to infrastructure. You know, you're going to be very cash orientated when you're in tech. If you're in infrastructure, you're going to be very capital and funding exposed. It's a, it's a different lever that you need to pull. And it's a lever that to get to the ultimate role of treasurer, you need to have pulled all these levers because you're not going to get the treasurer role unless you do. You know, likewise, you go to a, a big global FMCG, for instance, where FX is really important on a global scale. Um, or likewise, you know, real estate. You know, all of these things, they're very, very different industries that from a, treasury, um, from a treasury experience perspective and the challenges that come, you'll get very, very different experience in each of them. So focus on career development and broadening your experience as much as possible. Awesome. So we got a good question in here from Jim. Jim, thanks for the question. So he basically said, so, but could you undertitle your undertitled role hinder you from getting through gatekeepers and companies in the future. You know, he's basically says, yeah, I agree. It's a lazy filler, but when you're going up against others with better, better titles, you might not get traction. I mean, what's the feedback on that? Yeah. So you just touched on that. What's the value that we're able to bring. And that's, that's where we're able to add that value is, Hey, uh, one of the conversations that I have with clients all the time is I'm going to send you people who can do this job. Don't judge a book by its cover. Just like, like I'm a huge believer of just talking to people and, and learning for yourself and, and just not drawing conclusions just based off of a piece of paper or a profile or anything else. And that is the value that we are able to provide is we can help bridge that gap and get out of that hiring manager's head that if you're a senior analyst applying for a director, yeah, you, you might have just got caught up in some titling crap at your previous company. It doesn't matter. We can help show the experience that you have. And then all you have to do on the other end is really just pull through with the executive presence, if it is a director level or pull through with the technical experience and the explanation of your experience, we can help you navigate through that. Right. So that's you, like the, 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 the advantage of working, you know, with the treasury talent team essentially in, in this specific case would be that if he had a role 
with say that was a manager versus a director, us going to a bat for him is going to help, you know, obviously increase his, his probability of doing that because of exactly, um, you know, if you're focused on your LinkedIn profile, for example, to do the work for you or the CV, it's just not going to get it done. But Scotty, what do you have to say about that? Well, yeah, no. So I a hundred percent agree with that. And, and that is a, a, where we can add a ton of value, but for everybody listening who, you know, is, is doing this on their own, right. Who doesn't necessarily have the benefit. And I would argue you, can give us a call and we'd be happy to help you. But if you are doing this on your own, the, the key in that case is, first of all, you have to take an honest self-assessment and recognize, you know, is, is it a titling thing or, or is it, you know, do I really have the experience for that next step? If that is in fact the case, then you've got to be very clear. And this is a, a lot of work, but I would argue that it, it ta- it's worth the time and the effort to make sure that you highlight your experience and background on a resume or, you know, in, in the interview as to why you check the boxes, so to speak, or why you are going to be able to do this job. So for Jim, if you're, if you are senior treasury analyst and you're, and you want to um, get that senior manager title, if you feel, if you're, if you are in fact qualified for it, make sure you illustrate why you're qualified, whether it's on paper or in the interview, because a smart hiring manager is going to look past the title. They're going to look at, can this person, in fact, be successful in the job and add value to the company? Great feedback, Scott. I've got another question coming in from Michael. Mike, thanks for the question. How do you switch industries if you only have one type of experience in an industry? Yeah, this is a really, uh, this, is a, this is a whole different topic. Uh, oh, there we go, Michael. Thank you. we got a topic yeah. for next week. Yeah, we there we go. On this one. Um, so, Again, my opinion in Treasury is that industries are agnostic. Um, I, I did a, a podcast the other day um, with uh, the treasurer of Hilton Worldwide, and he, he was saying it's Treasury is like a big algorithm, and you're just pulling different levers depending on what industry um, that you you work in. So, realistically, you know, there's a bit of jargon and a few buzzwords that happen in each industry, but within a few months, you know, you, you're doing Treasury work. You're not you're not doing um, specific things around that industry. So I, I personally don't think it should matter, but the reality of it is that it does. I mean, Joe, you've got a good example, haven't you, where you had a great candidate who got down to the final two and they ended up going with someone who had similar industry experience rather than taking a risk. Yeah, that was ultimately the case. And um, my advice to that person and how part of the reason how it, um, around how he got to as far as he did is to Scotty's point, have a, have a realistic self-assessment on where your blind spots are, your positives and your negatives for that position, but any negatives or any hurdles that you know that you need to overcome, for instance, industry experience, research the industry and have a plan for how you're going to get up to speed. Treasury is going to be treasury to Simon's point. It's going to have its little nuances. Research on the nuances of treasury uh, in that specific industry. Maybe network with other industry professionals who are in that industry. Get a feel for what they do and what that what that treasury function looks like in their industry. That way you're coming prepared, you're audible ready for, uh, hey, you know what? I know I don't have experience in this industry. Here's all the research I've already done. Here's my plan of attack. This is what it's gonna look like for me in three months and I'm in the role, six months when I'm in the role and a year when I'm in the role. And chances are after three months, that experience is already gonna be covered and that gap's gonna be covered anyway. But just show up with a plan of attack. It shows that you, you envision yourself in the role and it, I mean, what hiring managers going to walk away from that saying, oh yeah, he's, he's being, or he or she's being way too forward. I, I don't want that person on my team. It's, you just have to, it's the strategic thought behind it and having a plan of attack. That's awesome. Those of you that are just uh, watching for the first time right now, um, we're just finishing up a conversation about how important uh, titles are or aren't in the treasury space. Um, so we've had some really good dialogue. If you have any remaining questions, please ask them now as we uh, start to wrap this up. But Scotty, did you have anything else you wanted to add to, to Joe's comment there? Uh, no, I mean, I think, you know, I think Joe put it perfectly. Um, it really, if, if you want to put it succinctly, it's what, what is the objection going to be? Be prepared to overcome it and yep. really get it, get it out of the way early. Right. I, I used to have a boss that would talk about, you know, get the ugly out early. Um, just address the thing that you know is going to be a challenge. And, but Joe said it perfectly. It's all about preparation and, and helping to overcome the objection that you know is going to, is going to come. Excellent. Excellent. 
Um, well, if nobody has any other questions, we're going to kind of wrap this thing up here, guys. Um, thank you so much, you know, for hanging out with us here today. We're going to try to drop in here at least once a week or, or so um, and have these conversations with you and, you know, answer some relevant topics. So as we uh, ask questions in the community, definitely, um, you know, interact with those questions so that we know how to best um, serve you and show up. And hopefully today's topic was was relevant. Um, for those of you that don't know, we do have a Treasury Talent podcast. Um, so you can just head over to treasurytalent.com and follow the podcast link on there. Um, Simon interviews the top treasurers throughout the globe um, on a weekly basis there. And we also offer a free career consultation. So um, whether you're looking to move right now um, or in the future, if you just want to see, you know, know what the, what's out in the market, go to treasurytalent.com slash career consultation and fill out that form. And then we will get back to you um, with the time that we can, we can speak. Uh, but ultimately, you know, just so you guys know, our, our team is focused exclusively on the treasury market. And, you know, we build, our, our focus is building relationships with you guys and being your resource for your entire career, um, whether you're moving your career or whether you're looking to build out your team um, the Treasury Talent team is here to help. So let us know how we can help. Check out the Treasury Talent podcast. Um, check out the Treasury Talent um, career consultation if you're interested in that. I will drop some links for that after this, um, after we're done here. Um, Simon, Joe, Scotty, anything else you guys want to leave with here? Just uh, the other the other thing, Donnie, is we've got the, um, the careers uh, event that's coming up. So the, the virtual networking and careers uh, event. You can actually yeah. find, if you go to events in uh, LinkedIn, you can register your interest there, but that will basically be five of the, the top treasurers uh, who are uh, going to do a live podcast effectively. And uh, there'll be an hour of networking after that. We've got some pretty neat technology that allows us to um, put you in groups of four and basically work around like you would do at a conference, meeting the other, uh, the other people there. So we've got about 500 people who are locked in for that. So please register your interest there. Um, we'll have some pretty other interesting sessions that we'll, uh, we'll announce over the coming weeks. But right now, uh, jump on and register your interest. Yeah, and I can't speak for the other two. I always tell people I have a, uh, a face built for the telephone, but if you actually want to watch videos with me, Scotty, Simon, anything like that, check us out on YouTube, uh, Treasury Talent. We have our YouTube channel up and running, uploading a ton of videos there. So uh, if you don't catch us on one of these, or, um, you know, if you have questions just around your career, anything that's going on in the industry, there's plenty of knowledge on there too. And I just want to say thanks to everybody who attended the live event today. Uh, thanks, Donnie, for hosting and look forward to seeing you guys all next week. Absolutely. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Thank you, guys. Reach out for anything treasury related when it comes to careers. We'll talk to you guys all next week. Peace.